Hello, uh, this is the introductory video on entering data in the SPSS and what I'm going to do today is kind of familiarize you with um, the basic setup of SPSS and tell you a little bit about the SPSS environment um, and more importantly I'm going to show you how to how to set up a data file in SPSS. <clears throat> so before we get into the specifics of SPSS I want to talk about a hypothetical experiment that we um, are going to use to show us how to set up the data file. So in our experiment, um, we have a research question, and that research question is, does exercising before going to bed enhance the quality of sleep? And um, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, actually, if you uh, Google that question, you're going to get you know conflicting opinions on the matter. But that's not really important. We're just using it as an example. Um, what is important to note is that um, this is an experiment, which means that, um, and it's the most basic type of experiment you can have. So we have a control group and a treatment group. So we have an independent variable. We have one independent variable with two levels or two groups. So we have the control group um, who does not exercise before they go to bed. And we have the treatment group who does exercise before they go to bed. Okay. Um, now, when you define your independent variable in SPSS, you typically need to set up what is called a grouping variable. Um, and in order to do that, you have to dummy code um, the two levels of your independent variable. So when we talk about um, dummy coding, I should quit playing with that. When we talk about dummy coding, what we're talking about is simply um, assigning an arbitrary number to um, the different groups. And what this does is it simply tells SPSS who is in the control group and who is in the treatment group. So here I've decided that we're going to call, um, we're going to assign a one to control group participants and we're going to assign a two to treatment group participants. But again, these numbers are totally arbitrary. I could have put in a one or a zero or a one and a three or whatever I wanted. So um, that is our independent variable. So again, one independent variable, two levels. And then we also have a dependent variable, um, which is sometimes called an outcome measure. So our dependent variable, um, we've got three of them. We're asking people to indicate um, whether they're male or female. And again, I've dummy coded that. So um, um, I've decided that one um, is going to be assigned to the males and two to the females. Um, and we have two other dependent variables. How many hours on average do you sleep at night? And also we ask participants to rate the quality of their sleep on a scale of from one to 10. One being fantastic and 10 being terrible. Now you may be asking yourself, why don't I have to dummy code these variables? And the reason is, is that your grouping variable and this dependent variable sex are both categorical um, in nature. And categorical data is sometimes called discrete data or nominal data. And basically what that means is that you can only fall in one category or another. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So we are going to come back to this example. Um, but right now what I want to focus on is um, the SPSS um, setup. So when you open SPSS, this is the dialog box that you typically see. And it gives you several options. Um, if you want to um, open an existing data source, you just click on this and then click OK. And what that does is it allows you to browse for an SPSS file that you have saved on your computer. Um, if you want to open up another type of data file, for example, you want to import data from Excel, you would open up that file using this option. And then most of the time in this class, we're going to select type in data where you are actually um, essentially creating a new data file from scratch. Okay, so we're going to select that and we are going to click OK. Now, <clears throat> what I want to show you here is um, the data view. <clears throat> That's where we're going to start. So the way this works is each row in your spreadsheet here is a participant or an observation in your study. So just for example, if I had 15 rows of data, that would represent 15 subjects or participants or observations. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty straightforward. So the rows correspond to um, your participants. 
okay now the columns represent variables in your study so you could have very few variables depending on the nature of your study or you could have a ton of variables depending on the nature of your study so just keep in mind that the rows refer to individual participants and the columns refer to your variables your independent variables and your dependent variables um, so one thing I want you to notice that I guess the next thing I want you to notice is down here on the bottom left we have um, a data view tab and a variable view tab and so when you're setting up your data file these are the two screens that you're going to be working with and you can toggle um, back and forth between data view and variable view um, using these buttons here these tabs so now we are in variable view and um, recall that in data view the rows represented individual subjects in our study well that's no longer true um, in the variable view now the rows represent individual variables in our study and that's probably kind of confusing to you but I'm going to show you in a second that it makes perfect sense so when we start setting up our data file we have our first variable and um, we're, we need to name it so if we go back to our um, experiment real quick you'll see that we have um, the grouping variable one equals control two equals treatment so that's the first variable that we're gonna set up okay that's our grouping variable and again this is simply telling the computer which participant is in which group so we're gonna name it group if you tab over <clears throat> you have an option here to select a type of variable and you've got um, options for numeric um, date currency and so if you go to date you can select your date format but you've got currency and um, another common one that people sometimes use is a string variable which is simply a word so it's a string of letters so if you wanted to type in individual names for people you could do that using the string variable <clears throat> but by default um, SPSS sets it at numeric and that's what we're going to use um, you can also adjust the width um, of the uh, the the um, name option here so you can um, you know set that higher if you want to use more characters um, to name your variable um, in terms of decimals the default is two that means SPSS is going to show two decimal places um, if you don't want any you can set that to zero if you want more decimal places if you have you know really specific data and you really need to look at um, um, you know a lot of decimal places you can adjust that there um, one of the more important things that you're going to come across is the label and I want you to get into the habit of labeling your variables and what the label box does is it allows you to provide a more um, detailed description of your variable and I will explain to you um, in, in a little bit why it's important but here we're just going to put in a short description okay control or treatment okay question mark okay so that is telling me that that's what this variable is all about we are specifying whether the people are in the control or the treatment group um, the two other important um, fields in terms of defining your variables is the value view um, so if you click on um, the right side of the cell it brings up this dialog box here and you're going to use this when you have discrete or categorical data um, and what you're doing is you're simply assigning a value to your label so we already agreed that one was going to represent the control group so I'm going to put one I'm going to write control and I'm going to click add and we agreed that two is going to represent the control group I'm sorry the treatment group add okay and then you click OK and you're all done and I'll explain to you why that's important in a minute um, we're not going to worry about missing data um, but there are options in terms of how you want the program to deal with missing data we're not going to worry about columns or alignment or the role but the other thing that is important to note is the um, measure option so this is where you're going to actually select your scale of measurement so this is categorical data so our scale of measurement is what is it um, scale which represents um, ordinal and interval data I'm sorry interval and ratio data is it ordinal which is rank data or is it nominal data 
If you said nominal data, that is correct because that is another name for discrete or categorical data. Okay, so we have defined our independent variable in SPSS and let's take a look at our experiment again to see what we have to define next. Okay, our dependent variable, we the next thing we have here is sex. Okay, um, so we are going to type in sex for the name, pretty straightforward. For the label, we're going to put um, male or female. Okay, um, and this is a categorical variable, so we need to define that. So under variable label, we're going to put one is male, add, and two is female. Whoops. Okay, and remember that these numbers are arbitrary. It doesn't mean that, that men are ranked higher than women. These are just simply arbitrary uh, numbers used to represent the different groups. They could be anything as long as they're different. So we're gonna click OK, and this is also nominal data. Okay, so going back to our experiment, the next thing we have is how many hours on average do you sleep at night? So we're gonna call this hours slept. We are going to call this um, for the label, how many hours did you sleep last night? Um, we should actually, we should call that how many hours do you sleep at night, okay? And this is a continuous variable, so we don't need to assign a value label. So uh, no to that. Um, this is a continuous variable, so it gets scale. And then our final variable is rate the quality of your sleep on a one to, on a one to ten scale. So we're going to put um, sleep quality. That's what we're going to call this variable. And we're going to put rate your sleep quality. So this again is just simply a description of, um, sorry, I know I'm probably giving you a seizure, but this is just simply a description of this variable. You can call it whatever you want. And this is also a scale variable. Okay, so we've defined our variables in SPSS. And now let's take a look at what happens when we go back to data view. So what you're going to see is, again, these are all variables in your study. This is your independent variable and your dependent variable. Um, and if you go back to data view, you'll see that you see these variables represented in the columns. Okay, so let's type in our hypothetical data. So our first research participant is in the control group. So they are assigned a what? A one. Okay. Um, they are a female. They reported sleeping an average of eight hours a night and their sleep quality they rated as a seven. Our second participant is also a female. Um, whoops, is, I'm sorry. Our second participant is in the treatment group so they get a two. They are also a female. They reported sleeping uh, on average seven hours a night and they rated their sleep quality as a six. So bear in mind here that we have um, a control group participant, which means they did not exercise. They don't exercise before they go to bed. They're a female. This is what they reported for their average, average hours of um, sleep per night and the sleep quality. Okay, And this is a treatment group participant, also a female, so on and so forth. Our next participant is a um, male who is in the... I'm sorry, I keep messing that up. Th this is a treatment group, a control group participant who is a male. Okay. And they sleep an average of seven hours a night and they rated their sleep quality as a six. Okay. Our next participant is in the treatment group. Um, they are a male and they sleep five hours on average per night and they rated their sleep quality a five. Okay, our next participant is a female. I'm sorry, our next participant is in the uh, control group, is a female. Um, six hours per night and they rated their sleep quality an eight. Okay, and our final participant is in the treatment group, um, is a female. 
um, gets six hours of sleep per night and rates their sleep quality as a three on a scale of one to 10. Okay, so that is your hypothetical data. Um, so you can see that you have your um, independent variable represented here and you have your three dependent variables and we have one, two, three, four, five, six subjects. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Um, so you'll notice here that um, it, that we've included um, sex as a dependent variable, but you could also include it as an independent variable. So you just simply, you know, if these were your two independent variables, um, you would have a um, control group participant who's female, okay? But you can treat this as an outcome measure, as a dependent variable, or an independent variable if you want, if that's something that you want to look at in terms of your research question. For example, if we wanted to see if there were differences between males and females. Okay? Um, so let me give you a quick demonstration and show you why um, uh, putting in uh, labels and uh, value labels is important. Um, so if you have a huge data set with a lot of different variables, it can kind of be confusing, especially given that you can't really put in many, you can't really put in a descriptive term for uh, your variables. Um, so we just call this group, we call this sex, hours slept. But if you've got a lot of variables that have similar names, um, it can kind of be confusing to remember what variable represents what. So all you have to do, because you defined your labels um, over here, um, is just hover your mouse over and this tells you, oh, control group or treatment group. Sex, male or female. Hours slept, what does that mean? Oh, how many hours did you sleep last night? Okay, that's what that is. Sleep quality, rate your sleep quality on a scale of one to 10. Okay, now I remember. So that's what that is valuable for. And then in terms of your value labels, um, this is important for interpreting your output. So I'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration of what I mean. So if we go to analyze and we go to descriptive statistics and we go to frequencies, let's just say we're interested in learning how many uh, males and how many females is in our, our, are in our study. So we're gonna run the frequencies on males and females. We're just gonna drag over males or females here and then click okay. Okay, so here's our SPSS output. And what you see here is um, that we have uh, three males and three females in our study. Um, the males are 50% of our sample. The females are also 50% of our sample. Okay, now you'll notice here that it says male and female. And that is because you defined it in SPSS. You put in that value label. If you did not do that, it would simply say a one here and a two here. And then you would have to remember, uh, what did I call males? Oh yeah, I recall. I, re I call them a one and females a two. So if you're dealing with a categorical variable that has a lot of different categories, like race, like one is Caucasian, two is African American, three is Latino, four is Asian, you may forget what numbers you assigned um, the different categories. And so using the value label will help you do that. Okay, so that is um, it in terms of setting up your SPSS data file and you should definitely be able to do it now that you've seen this video. Uh, until next time, see you later.